know the VLAN have divided network into different broadcast domains, okay? Such as in one switch, if we deploy the VLAN, then this switch is divided into two broadcast domains. And then the host connect to this half. For example, this is VLAN 10, this is VLAN 20. The host connect to VLAN 10 and the host connect to VLAN 20 cannot communicate each other, okay? So they are divided. And then if we want PC1 connect to VLAN 10 and PC2 connect to VLAN 20 to communicate each other, what can we do? We can using the inter-VLAN routing, okay? Inter-VLAN routing, okay? So in this chapter, we will discuss what is the inter-VLAN routing, okay? The concept of inter-VLAN routing. And then we can see two solutions configured for inter-VLAN routing. Okay, one is depend on the router and another is using layer three switches. Okay, and then we will discuss how to configure inter-VLAN routing, okay? First, the disadvantages. In this scenario, this, there is one switch, okay? On this switch, we deployed two VLANs, VLAN 100 and VLAN 200. And then there is a host connected to certain VLANs. And then VLAN 100 is one broadcast domain and the VLAN 200 is another broadcast domain. And then these two hosts can communicate each other, can send in broadcast each other. And these two hosts also can send in broadcast each other. But the host between these two broadcast domains cannot communicate each other, okay? This is the disadvantages. How to solve this problem? We're using inter-VLAN routing, okay? In the inter-VLAN routing, we just deployed a router, okay? In the router. And then, in the router, connect two interfaces, one interface to this VLAN, and another interface to this VLAN, okay? I think this is a traditional routing model, okay? One router, and then two interfaces, okay? And the one interface connected one switch. Of course, this is a logical switch, VLAN 100, okay? And another is another logical switch, that's VLAN 200. And then the host connected to VLAN 100 and the VLAN 200 can communicate each other. Of course, this is a layer three communication, okay? The router is a layer three forwarding, okay? And then, if we want, of course, this is too logical. And then, one logical switch needs one physical connection, okay? And then, if we can simplify this, we use one physical connection, and uh, there's uh, many logical connections in this physical link. What's this? This is a trunk, okay? Using the trunk, the concept of a trunk. On this trunk, multiple VLANs can communicate use this physical link, okay? This is, we also think, single arm routing, okay? Single arm routing. There's only one physical link, okay? Then, the packet from one broadcast domain to another will send in to the switch. But the switch is divided into two logical, okay? So, can only forward to the host, to the IP address in the same broadcast domain, okay? That's router A. And the router A, we are sending to another logical interface and then forwarding out. Okay, this is a model of one single arm routing. Okay, one arm routing. Okay, and then how to configure this? Okay, the configure this, we can create VLANs. Okay, these two interfaces is assigned as the access interface. Okay, access port and then assign VLANs, assign certain VLANs. And uh, this link, because the traffic between two VLANs should all passing through this. So this interface should configure as a trunk, as a trunk. And then on this routers, we also need to terminate two VLANs, work as the gateway of two VLANs. So, on this physical interface, we should deploy two logical interfaces. One logical interface 
terminate VLAN 2 and another logical interface terminate VLAN 3. And then we can see how to configure it. First, the configuration of the switch. On switch, we just create two VLANs and then assign gigabit 001-002 as the access port, okay, access port, and then certain VLANs. And uh, this interface is connected to router, should carry traffic of these two VLANs, okay. So configure this port 003 as the trunk, and then allow pass VLAN, of course, you can specify all. That's all VLAN can pass, but now we only need to pass these two. You can list these two. Allow pass VLAN two and three. Okay, this also can be work. Okay, and then the router, the configuration of the router. The router should config two gateways for these two VLANs. Okay, so on this physical interface, we should first create a logical interface. Okay, then. This logical interface should assign to certain VLANs. This is a certain VLAN, that's a VLAN 2, okay? Using dot one q termination VLAN ID 2, okay? Assign this sub-interface to VLAN 2, okay? And then, assign a gateway, the gateway, the IP address for the gateway. And then, another interface, another logical interface is the same, the VID, and then the gateway address. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, there's another command. Okay, this is assistant command. And uh, this is dependent on the versions of VRP. In certain versions of VRP, the sub-interface of the router did not sending out app request. That means this router, this host IP address cannot map the MAC address. Okay, the IP address MAC to MAC address. So, we need this command, but a certain versions did not need this command, okay? So, after this, after finish the configuration, we can check if the configuration is successful. We can using ping, and then we can see they are responding, okay? The PCs from two VLANs can communicate each other now, okay? And then, another Another solution is using the layer three switch. Okay, the layer three switch just integrates the standalone router, okay? In the previous solution, there is one switch, and then there is a router, okay? And then the packet is going up, and then from router down, okay? So, the layer three switch is a concept, integrates the function of layer three router into the switch. Okay, so this is the layer 3 switch. This switch combines the function of the switch in the router. But after this, then the configuration of this link is did not needed. So on the switch did not to configure the trunk port and on the router did not need to configure sub interface. Okay, the gateway only needed to implement it on this switch using this command interface vlan2 and interface vlan3 then on the switch we will create a layer 3 interface for the vlan2 okay and act as the gateway of vlan2 and the layer 3 is the same okay this is much simple much simple than the single arm routing okay and then we can see first the configuration of the switch part. This is the same as the layer two switch, okay? First create, okay, create the VLANs. And then these two interface configured as the access interface, okay? GL001 and 002 as the access interface. And then two VLANs is assigned. And the trunk interface now is not appear, okay? Is not appear in this solution. And then we need to configure the gateway. The gateway configuration is also configured on the layer 3 switch, just using the interface VLAN if 2 And then configure the gateway IP address. And then the interface the VLAN if 3 then configure the gateway IP address. Okay, let's finish. Okay, then we can check 
if these two PCs can ping each other, of course, they can ping each other, okay? And then, uh, there are two questions, okay? What is the purpose of dot one q termination vid command? Okay, this command is used for the single arm routing, okay? And this is configured on the router, okay? Using it to assign the sub-interface to certain VLANs, okay? This is the command, okay? Uh, the second, what is required to configure on switch to allow VLAN traffic to be forwarded to the configured sub-interface? Okay, this is a single arm routing. Okay, if on the switch and the router, this connection, this physical connection should be trunk, okay, should be trunk. All the VLANs that want to be routed by the router should allow pass on this link, okay? Okay, this is the configuration of the switch should be configured this interface as a trunk, okay? 